Okay. Hello everybody and welcome to Gengar Z Plays Life is Strange Before the Storm. No. The last episode. Last part. We just came out of the hospital from where Rachel and Drew were. And Rachel's passed to us to still find the book. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. Hello? I need to search this office for any communication with Sarah that can help me find her. Arcadia Bay's least wanted. What do we have here? I should check the computer, or some of those files laying around. If it can rain ash, I guess it could snow in LA. Big one. James has a file on Frank. I'd love to read this. But I've got to focus on finding Rachel's... Best dad? <laughs> that stuff is all politics anyway. Hmm. feel like I've heard that name before. Sheldon. Why do I feel like I've heard that name before? I guess getting your ass kissed comes with the DA territory. Service Award pre presented to James Amber. In appreciation of your integrity, honesty, and dedication to the fair and ethical administration of justice.
<laughs> More sherry. More sherry. <sighs> James sure keeps lots of files on people. Pro tip, when digging for secrets, try the DA's computer. Locked drawer inside locked office. Seems promising. I'm not gonna be able to smash my way through this one. Hopefully there's a key around somewhere. Pro tip, when digging for secrets, even if James is trying to protect Rachel from her mother, this seems like a pretty terrible way to act. Sarah Geralt at uh, I thought the Geralt Arcade DA.org.us James, this is enough. When you told me you at the park you that you weren't gonna let me be a part of Rachel's life, of course I was angry. But I understood you need to protect her. It's your prerogative as a parent. Per prerogative. Do work for me. But sending that man to talk sense to me, threaten me, you're losing your moral high ground here. What kind of way is that for the, a DA to act? What would Roger say? I have the right to meet my daughter, and the lawyer spoke with, I spoke with agrees. But more importantly, Rachel has no right, has the right to know who her mother is, to know the truth. Do what you know is right, Sarah. <laughs> Hey Chloe, thanks again for visiting. Drew's been so much happier since you came by. He says good luck out there. Thanks. Good luck to him too. Chloe? Yeah. You're stronger than anything. Hope so. James's stamp collection. I have to know who James is talking to on the secret phone of his. It could be about Sarah.
Okay, there we go. Or hope. I'm told you can help me with my problem. Crossing line, eh? Let's talk. No call tonight. I found who you were looking for. So this is on the 4th of the 21st. Are you 15? Or something? Well, this isn't a charity. I'm going to need you to do what we talked about. I can't. Sure you can, because I talked to your girl, and she has a big mouth. So this definitely isn't good. No point. Turns out she's not so easy with the age. We're going to need more hands on. Oh, Herder. Relax, I've got my best guy on it. How's your daughter? Just a moment. You know she attacked me first, right? You really should teach her to behave better. Nothing. I guess you don't need ta this taken care of anymore. James, is he working with Damon Merrick? This is insane. What were they talking about? Is the girl Damon's talking about Sarah? <sighs> Whatever is going on, I need to see if Damon knows where Sarah is. But how do I get him to tell me? I told you. But you'll pay for what you did to Rachel. I told you she came at me. It was self-defense. Besides, pretty sure you still need me. It's simple. I mean, you do what I want or your little problem becomes a big problem. Now, did you take care of the evidence or not? Shit. What do I say? Did I know how this I know you knew at this, but here's how it works. You show me proof, I'll give you what you want. Hope James actually has this evidence. Don't think Damon will tell me where Sarah is. Unless I send him a picture. Shit. Which of these is Damon talking about? I could just take a wild guess and see what he says. Or maybe there's some info on the case hanging around the office. Did Damon really shoot someone? Guess I shouldn't be surprised. Could this be the evidence? Damon and Knives seem like a solid bet. TV has taught me anything, these babies will be swimming in DNA. James has a file on Frank. I'd love to read this, but I've got to focus on finding Rachel's mom. Sarah sent all these letters, and James never gave them to Rachel? That's so messed up. To my Rachel, my name's Sarah, and I am your biological mother. The first thing you should know about me that is that giving you up was the worst mistake I ever made. I was struggling with something at the time, something I have been, have been battling ever, with ever since. That battle has taken me taken everything from me, most importantly you. But now I'm in a place where I, I know I can be a part of your life. It is more than I deserve, I know, but I would love to try if you want to do, if you want to. 
please take your time and if you have anything to say or qu any questions, hearing from you would mean the world. I love you very much and I hope to meet you soon. Now Sarah. Dearest Rachel, I hope it's alright for me to write to you again. I haven't heard from you yet. And that's okay. It really is. If it's more like a if than it like. It really is. I just I feel like I have so much to catch up on, you know? I don't remember much of my life. It's a symptom of the choices I've made. So much is lost. Except you. I remember everything about you. The crinkle of your nose, the depths of your eyes, the knowing smile that somehow made it seem like you'd seen it all before. I can call it up, you know, whenever I want. The clearest the summer day. I was so afraid. Afraid that I would be a terrible mother to you. That I screw you up the way I screwed up my source of my, of my life. <coughs> now I know, of course, that my fear was wrong. Far worse than being a bad mother is never knowing what kind of mother I would have been. I'm so sorry. If you can find the courage to forgive me, maybe we can start over. I want to. With all my might, I want to. Love, Sarah. Beautiful Rachel, I read somewhere, maybe a fortune cookie, that you can never. S check the mic yep. That you can never step in the same. Sarah in this letter doesn't seem anything at all like the person James told us about last night.
So, this looks like Sarah stopped cashing the checks James sent her. Guess he forgot to mention that during his story last night. James sure keeps lots of files on people. Sheldon. Why do I feel like I've heard that name before? Most of that didn't go unnoticed. So read a lot. Okay, Bay Police Department incident report. Three eight 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 case type assault. Date four for the twelfth, twenty ten. Who's that? I don't know. I don't know if it's going to be different in a place, in an institution, rather than. It's actually written because <laughs> over you in the EU, right? It's date, month, year, and I can't tell when the month can be go up to twelve. Okay. Anyway, reporting officer, Sergeant Alex Keller, badge number five two one. Subset, suspect, description, David Merrick, age 31, date of birth, doesn't have a frickin' name, I mean, date of birth, sex male, height 6'3", weight 180, hair brown, eyes brown, race white. Time person described above is charged as follows. Time of offence, aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. 20 time, 22-15. Date of offence, 4th of 12th, 2010. Place of occurrence, Tomnus Lumber, Precinct 205. Allegations. After a verbal altercation with the victim, Merrick brandished a fire poker, hitting the victim several times with the about the head before fleeing the scene. Merrick's gloves were recovered and entered into evidence. A 911 call was received at 10.21 p.m. and an officer arrived at, on scene at 10.38 with EMT. The victim was taken to a hostel. A bystander who requested to remain anonymous named Damon Merrick as they sailed. Sergeant Alex Keller, guys. And from the day for the twelve. If I can figure out how. How do I destroy a glove? Maybe I can burn it somehow.
Okay, not to lie, but there's probably better ways of main Sarah than complying with Damon. Oof. Better not touch that again. James has something here to tell me who Damon's informant is. So I need to find which of Damon's guys has been snitching? I should search around the office to see if there's any info to help me out. Think you'll be home. Don't wait for me. Sweetheart, we don't get enough family time as it is. As, yeah. Does Rachel want to join us? She's very welcome to. I'm, I'm sorry, I can't. Um, I just can't make it tonight. Sorry. Chloe, is that okay? Okay. Yeah, I'm going to come. Okay. Love you. Love you too. Arcadia Bay's least wanted. Okay, there's no way that Frank is snitching on Damon. But I love learning about his badass loitering charge. Okay. Okay, Bay Police Department, suspect profile, suspect's name, Frank Bowers, known alias Frank, Frankie, Frankie B, date of birth, 8th of the 31st, 1981, Arcadia Bay, or height 6 foot, feet 1 inch, weight 109 pounds, scars, tattoos, slash tattoos on them, race white, details, the 5th of the 23rd, 06, the 5th of the 25th, 06. By Arcadia Bay Police Department on suspicious on suspicions of drug deal and murder. Drug deal charges dropped due to insufficient evidence. That's for these files, so I'm making a bad time for Mike. This is that freak from the mill. Wonder what Damon would think of his very cooperative comment. Okay, the police department, parole Sur supervision services, parole officer o Oliver Rufford, today's date, 4th of the 30th, 2010. Parolee Sheldon Pike. Were you arrested in the last month? Yes. No, he wasn't. If yes, list the date and say and charge. Employment. Same. X. New. Unemployed. Verified income for the last month $1,775. Company ACFC, position shift leader. Officer comments has been very cooperative, no mischeckings. Officer signature, all over referred to only signature. So I'm sorry. I agree to aid the courts on future cases. That could be seen as a little snitchy. Oregon State Court, State of Oregon Plaintiff versus 
Gerald Scott, defendant, case number 1284-08, plea agreement waiver rights slash waiver of rights. I, the defendant, plea as follows, charge illegal sale of stolen goods, guilty, no contest. I understand my rights and give them up of my own free will. Initials GS, I understand the judge is not bound by this agreement. Initials GS, I agree to aid the course in future cases related to my own. Initials GS, defendant signature, Gerald Scott, date 3rd of the 17th, 3rd 17th, or the 3rd 17th. Arcadia Bay's least wanted. Okay. If I'm going to accuse one of these guys, I'd better be sure I'm right. Guess this explains why Mr. Amber knows so much about Frank. Could this douchebag be the snitch Damon's talking about? This guy let me into the mill. Cool dude. This is that asshole who was selling firewalk shirts. Guess I'm lucky James keeps so much info at home. I agree to aid the courts on future cases. <laughs> that could be seen as a little snitchy. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna have to look this up because I don't remember. I don't know. Well, I have no idea what the frick these two's names are. Vendor and Thunder. I don't remember Thunder, are they? Gerald Scott's the guy who's selling the firewall t-shirts, right? Is that what I Yeah, I know one of the guys is meant to be there, but do you expect me to remember? I like, don't put venue up there. You expect me from the last episode. is that asshole who was selling firewalk shirts. Here's hoping James already has Damon's money. <sighs> but where would it be? Hope James doesn't really get Damon off the hook. That dude's gotta pay. A 
I wonder if this has anything to do with Damon's stash. it so bad. Does James even know what he's doing? Okay, I still have time. Damon's waiting for his money, right? He wouldn't do anything to her. Yet. Fuck. I need to get there fast. Chloe? Elliot? Hey! Elliot, what are you doing here? What are you doing here? This is Rachel's house, right? Did he really just follow me here? I can't really talk about it. Rachel, Rachel needs my help. I'm sure she does. I'm more concerned about you. I'm fine. You're the one acting crazy. You shouldn't be here. Chloe, what is... Uh. Elliot, put that down. You have no idea what you're dealing with. And you do? Chloe, God, what have you gotten yourself into? You... You wouldn't understand. Give me a chance. What the hell are you doing? Okay, this is actually a pretty interesting dynamic. I have to, I have to be given credit, because this is a very strange dynamic. Because on one hand, you have someone who's been just by helping a friend. Like that's, that's a, it's a normal thing to do. But she's doing some of this more wrong because she's doing all this incriminating shit. Whereas the guy is doing something wrong, well, would be viewed as wrong as following her. And he is doing something that's more right by trying to stop her. It's a very strange circumstance that I don't think you would ever see. talk much about it. It has to do with Rachel's mother. Her real mother. And that explains you breaking into the DA's home and having this? Believe it or not, yes. I'm so sick of you not seeing who Rachel really is. When will you realize what she's doing to you? Elliot, just... Take a step back. No! You need to listen to me. What has your relationship with her gotten you? You... You don't know what you're talking about. First night you hang out, what happens? You end up in a fight. You don't know what you're talking about. Rachel saved my ass. I'm sure that's how it seemed to you. 
Stop, stop suggesting that she's somehow bad The for... next day she convinces you to skip school. Magically, she barely gets in trouble. And you get expelled. I took the fall because I wanted to. Rachel tried to protect me. Yet somehow, it all worked out for her in the end, as usual. You don't understand. You weren't there. Was she protecting you when she made you take part in a play you didn't want to be in? S seriously, man. You, you need to shut the fuck up before- I've been quiet long enough. Look, Rachel is an amazing actress. And I don't mean on stage. She's fake. You're real. And I hate to see her manipulate you like this. Elliot, I, I promise, n no one is manipulating me. No? Just look where you are now. A high school dropout, hanging out with criminals and breaking into houses. It's crazy. It just as easily could have been you in that hospital today. If that ever happened, Look, I, I hear you. I, I appreciate the concern. I don't think you do. Elliot. I'm the one who cares about you, Chloe. Me, not Rachel. It's time you saw the truth. What does that mean? It means you're going to stop thinking about Rachel and pay attention to me now, for once. Look, I'm sorry, but I really need to go. Why did you make me do that? Can't you just listen to me? Elliot, please. I know you're upset. But... I'm not upset! I'm trying to help you. Elliot's gone full-blown crazy. I... I need to get the police to come without tipping him off. Who was there for you? When Max left? When your dad died? No one else gave a shit about you except for me! We have a lot to talk about. And I don't care how long it takes. We're not leaving until you see that I'm right. All right, Elliot. Y you want to talk so bad? Let's talk. What's really going on here? You can tell me. You mean here? Specifically? Like, uh, the Amber House? I'm talking about your situation. Rachel is dangerous. You need to realize that. You are the one who's keeping me here. At the Arcadia Bay D.A. James Amber's house. You're acting strange. What's going on? What? Nothing. I... What are you... Ugh, you bitch! Can't you see? I just want to help you! You're going to assault me now? That's how far you'll go to protect Rachel? This is what I'm talking about. No, you idiot. What the fuck? Better run, dickbag. Cops will be here any minute.
told much destruction. All because Rachel got angry at her dad, who's been lying to her all her life, and he's still lying. Hey, being a dad's tough. That doesn't justify what he's done. I'm just saying, I'd probably do anything to keep you safe. Hey, Dad? Yeah? Did you ever lie to me? I don't mean telling me that ashtray I made for Mom wasn't a piece of crap. I mean, like, really lied about something that might hurt me to know. What do you think? I think you didn't. You didn't have to. You didn't, right? Would you love me less? Of course not. You sound pretty sure, sweetheart. You were pretty sure Mom would never fall in love with someone like David, too. Are you really ready to hear the answer to your question? Ready as I'll ever be. Problem is, I'm dead. So how am I supposed to tell you anything? I wish you'd told me when you could have. You don't like the perfect relationship we had? I wish you'd lived long enough for us to fuck it up. No word. My ride, my tunes. Am I seriously going in to face Damon Merrick? All for Rachel? Am I crazy? Hella crazy. I'm glad you're here, Dad. You don't want me to go? No. I like the company. Besides, you don't want to miss this. Things are about to get real. Shit. Is that blood? Frank? Frank! Shit, this is bad. I'll get you help, Frank. But first, I've got to help Rachel's mom.
Where the hell is Sarah? the homicidal drug dealer spooky deer where's the homicidal drug dealer spooky deer head Frank's couch is toast sober a year. Respect. It's hard to kick this shit. You can do this. Damon. What the hell are you doing here? I've got your money right here. The money James owes you? How the fuck do you- Run! No one has to know. Just, just let her go, and I won't say- No! Talking's over. Leave her alone! Shut up. What the fuck? You boosted the DA's shit? Got my money? Burned the evidence? All that? I'm just trying to help. Get 
away from her. I said shut the fuck up. No. Go to your fucking happy place. Run. Let this be a lesson, kid. Make good life choices, or you'll end up like her. Now, what do I do with... Damon! What did you do? Oh, <laughs> I fucked you up good, didn't I? Guess you really don't know when to quit. Glad to see you back on your feet. Chloe. Frank. You don't really want to do this again, do you? Okay. Then I don't want to do this again. Come on, man. Fuck you. Sarah. Frank, or, or Damon. Your friend, Frank, took care of Damon. You don't need to worry about them right now. Sit. Sarah, are you okay? We need to talk about what happened. I am so, so sorry for- Rachel can never know. What exactly can't Rachel know? What Jeans did, hiring that thug, shooting me up with- <sighs> He's a piece of shit. And I promise that- Rachel can never know. Tell me why. Doesn't she deserve to know what her father did? No. Rachel deserves a loving father. A father who cares for her. James is a liar. James <laughs> is a desperate man who loves his daughter. And she loves him. Tell her what happened here. And you'll take that away from her. Forever. And just, what is James protecting her from? You? She wants to meet you, Sarah. No, she doesn't. She wants to meet her mother. I can never be that for her. Why are you saying all this? Because James is right. He's taken something from me that I might not ever get back. But he's right. I'm broken. Everybody's broken, Sarah. Oh? Does everybody abandon their own child for 15 years? Does everybody take money to stay away? You're here now. That's what matters. What do you know? I know Rachel needs you. I know loss. I lost my father two years ago. How? Car accident. He was... He was picking up my mother from the grocery store and a truck ran a red light, and that 
was it? I'm sorry. You don't know what this is to me. Every pain. Every fear. Gone. No more sadness. No more grief. Why would anyone not want to feel that way? Ever. I don't know anything about addiction, but I know what it's like to be needed by someone. It gives you strength you never knew you had. Rachel needs you. Rachel needs her family. I, I recognize I might not know what the fuck I'm talking about here, but I just... I wish you could know how amazing Rachel is. I know. She's fearless. She's brilliant and talented. And she feels so much. She's so strong. She's had a good life. Raised in a loving home. Given opportunities I could never give her. At least talk to her. She's felt like something's been missing her whole life. She told me so. That something was you. She didn't miss anything. She has a perfect family. I used to think my dad was perfect. But now, I realize he was probably just as messed up as everyone. And it doesn't make me love him any less. That's a nice thought. What Rachel needs, though, is not to have her father taken away from her. <laughs> he doesn't it's deserve- It's not about James. It's not about me, and it's not about you. It's about Rachel. Tell her what James did, and you'll be killing him for her. You understand that, don't you? You lost your father. Do you really want to put Rachel through that? The worst mistake you ever made was giving Rachel up. That's what you said in your letter to her. You read that. You don't have to make the same mistake twice. Nothing can change the mistakes I made. I'll never get to be Rachel's mother. Not really. But there's one thing I can still do for her. The only thing I can do. Let me give her the father she deserves. The one who raised her, protected her. The one who loves her more than anything. You can do whatever you want, Chloe. You have the power. What you have to decide is whether you're going to protect Rachel or cause her even more hurt. So please, tell her I was never here. Let her have what peace she can without me. Wait. I just have to stay. This woman is an idiot.
Here we go. Yeah, this woman is a damn idiot. I don't care what she has to say. I just think it's stupid just the way she's acting like oh, she needs the power and she like the one that's protecting her all life. Yeah, that's already pretty much fucked up. To a decent amount, I'd say. But yeah, you hid that I was that I actually had a biological mother that's been one to attack me for years. Yeah, that's it's not gonna heal easy. Like instead like She's making a foolish choice where she's thinking, uh, things should stay as they are. No, the best, probably the, I thought, so that can't speak for people, but to me, the best possible option wouldn't be that. It would be accepting everything that's happened. She thinks she can't be more, she can be. But I actually see this kind of more of a sign of weakness. She's an idiot. That's, that's the whole way I'm looking at the situation though. Oh, do you want to meet her for ages? Now she's just on your side. Yeah, I don't shouldn't do that. When you'll probably be the best way to progress things. Okay. Here, Rachel gave this to me. She said she's had it her whole life. Since she was a baby. I I gave it to her. She'd want you to have it. Thank you, Chloe. Rachel's just fallen asleep. I know she'll be thrilled to see you when she wakes up. Maybe come back a little later? Hey. Go back to sleep, kiddo. You need your rest. Can I talk to Chloe? Alone? For a minute? Okay, sweetie. We'll be right outside. How are you feeling? Like I got stabbed? <laughs> says there'll be a sick scar. Maybe a tattoo is in order. Fuck yeah. We never actually escaped. Did we? We've got time. All the time in the world. So, how did everything go? Rachel, I've got to tell you something. I've got to say, this is a very compelling argument. I mean, what choice would someone make in this kind of situation?
Yeah, I'm still going. I'm just still watching. Um, that ending was super flipping rushed. As soon as you. As soon as you get into that mill, as soon as you start seeing them fight, just from that point on, I was just going like, slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down. Like, conversation was going so fast with Sarah, then I was thinking, oh, we'll get maybe a, another game play, a short gameplay section with Rachel afterwards. No, we just get a movie, a movie that clears up nothing. It doesn't resolve anything. It just go like, eh, yeah, these what the characters are doing. Hey, do you want to know why Sarah, Samantha isn't talking to, isn't well, doesn't want to be around Nathan anymore? Well, fuck you. You you're not gonna get an answer. Um, what happens, to Drew? Fuck you. You're not gonna get an answer. Um, Like, the ones that lead to the future, they were alright. Like, the scenes with Rachel and Chloe and the scene where David proposes to uh, Joyce. Those scenes are fine. Like, then there's a the point in the scene of Victoria looking at Evan taking a photo and going, like, what's the point of that? Just everything is so rushed. It's like, all the... And then there's all these characters that go nowhere. The guy who hit us with the ball in the first episode. That kind of quest ever going to come back? No. It's just so much content that could have been fleshed out that was never used. And then Dane and... It's like, he's not even a villain. It, what was the point of all that? Just to lead up to him just disappearing and fucking off for any real resolution of anything happening. It just adds, it added, it added nothing to Frank. That's a big thing. Like this series added nothing to Frank. It's just like, oh, I knew this guy. I fought with him. Maybe he's better in terms of Chloe because of it. I don't know. Because a very, very rushed ending. And it kind of made me think, would this game have been better? This series, these episodic episodes, would they have been better if every episode was just like a, a different focus on something that happened to Rachel and Chloe? Just imagine like over the course, like you get a day where something significant happens, then you go a few months, or maybe a year in time, may build up your relationship like the core moment. It, there's just so much crap that happens that it's just a bit too much. Like with hey, Max, Max was see the big thing about Max, she was uncovering a conspiracy that was already there. There's a question that was always going around: what happened to Rachel? What? Who's behind this? You think it's Nathan? It's not Nathan. This there's nothing. You just find out shit and then it just kind of leaves you like, yeah, okay, you can decide. And the biggest problem is that I'm given no time to empathize. You're given no time to empathize with the characters. The only one you can empathize with is Rachel. Everybody else is just given so fucking little time. There's no point to whatever choice you're going to make. Like, I don't care what happens to their family because I haven't spent enough time. You've given me literally, if I was speed rushing through that, I'd have about, what, 20 to 50 minutes of them, and then I just have to decide if I should fuck them over or not. You need time to push these out. You can't just. You can't just try and put all this content in and then have it go nowhere. 7 out of 10. This episode gets a 7 out of 10. First episode, very believable. Stuff happens. Second episode starts off. How's the second episode go? Get expelled. Won't play in the Tempest. 
yeah, that's still very believable. This one just went off back crazy in the rails. Just all the shit. Like, Chloe broke into the freaking DA's house. He broke into his dad's house. No resolution there. Like, Elliot's just... What, the, what was the point of Elliot? There's, like, no... The, like, Elliot is probably one of the weakest characters in this. He's like, oh, I'm here. I'm Chloe's friend. Then, like, uh, hey, Chloe. I'm here at most of your aftermaths of significant events. Still here. Then I'm going to follow you into this place and then just go crazy all of a sudden. Go like, oh, why are you fucking listening to me? Like, uh, you having a mental shutdown, mental breakdown there, Nate, uh, Elliot? Like, actually, he might be more fucked up than Nathan at that point. Yeah. At this point in time, at least. But later on, I don't think so. It's just like, there's no choices that really make any significance. Oh, yeah, there was one big part. One big part that I completely forgot about. What the heck was going on with... Uh, what's his name? William! The whole ghost thing. It went completely nowhere. He spent so much time on that, and then that whole scene where he's like, No, oh, I might have lied to you. And like, I wish you alive to know. But is this where that whole story was heading? I don't think so. I'm not even sure where it's heading. I think it's just put in there. It's the mail kit. They were probably the best scenes in the games, in the episodes. And then they end up on that, and it's just like, what the f What was the point of all that? What, what was that leading up to? What what does that mean? Why is she seeing these visions? Is she okay with that? Is she... She loves her dad. She thinks of him all the time. He's still around. Cryptic messages that don't... Then the whole far... The whole, this whole section of woods being on fire never resolved. Jeez. Just, ugh, it's just so much rushed. So much rushed. And then the whole thing with Rachel at the end of the episode, and it's just like. I have no idea what the hell her parents are angry about. Then, like, her dad throws, James Amber throws something on the ground, and I'm like, okay, why are they getting so pissed? Oh, the game's not gonna tell me. Thank you, game. Like, an extra scene, we just look at these and go like, oh, all this stuff happened. And then, no, no, you just pull in a movie, and you expect me, you just think, oh yeah, that, okay, that's, that's how it's going. There's nothing else to discuss here. Don't really have anything else to say. It's just the whole, like the story is a key element of this, and then just at the end, it just went completely off the track in a straight line. It's just like, hey, Colin and Rachel are still aboard. Their story's gonna start happening, but everybody else is just like shunned out of the curtain, just like, eh, we'll just wipe them wherever they are. It's just like, and they, where's your Chloe, keep going. And they, some other characters like Joyce and David's. jeez. Oh, uh, it's just like, then, just a lot of this doesn't make a significant impact on them. Okay, I guess the one thing I should talk about is, how is, I'll talk about two things. It is a whole, as, uh, as a three episode series, and as a prequel to Life is Strange. As a three episode series, two of the episodes were great. A significant impact, and a lot of the focus goes to Rachel and Chloe. And that was good. That was, uh, that was a big thing that we couldn't be a part of in the original Life is Strange. 
uh, but also focuses on developing those two characters, which is a good focus. But, but then there's a lot of this extra content that characters that just go nowhere and there's no point really being in this. No, and choices that have no impact. Um, this is three episode series. I oh, know it's just a big letdown when you get to the end. It's a big, big letdown. That was not the end. That was just a very rushed ending. Like they're just trying to push it out, and there's so much story. And then, oh, like Sarah just sitting there smoking. I was, I literally thought that was a dream sequence, and she's like, "Nope, that's my Frank took care of Damon, and we're just gonna have this talk." Like that was actually going on. <sighs> It's a great series. With not a great payoff. Gameplay is decent. <laughs> Relationships between characters is good. Good. There's a lot of characters that don't go on forth that we don't really care about. And there's some characters that are just kind of messed with where they don't really have any impact. Um, mm, I was thinking ugh, it would have been a dark way to end this series, but just having. Ooh, actually, that might have been a good. Instead of having this game just end with them being on that truck, if I think that's the last thing, have it end with Chloe pulling up missing pictures of Rachel Amber. Listen, monthly posters. That'd be a good lead up into this pre into the sequel. But anyway, I'll talk as backstory to Life is Strange now because it's great. Overall, eight point five out of ten. There's eight, eight point five for episode two, eight for episode one, and seven for episode three because contents. Just, uh, um. I said, I, I repeat that enough. Great content up until the end, and then just rushed. And nothing really concluded from all the past episodes. Um, it's a prequel to Life is Strange. Not a whole lot. Back. Like, well, a few. Who's the characters that actually significantly... Like, Chloe. Chloe? David. I say Frank to some degree. And that's it. Three characters of this series benefited. Everybody else no real point. Victoria Trace. Like, ex in this series, I actually should have, I would expected Victoria Trace to be a kiss ass to Rachel. Like, oh, I always want to be around her and all that. That didn't happen. Uh, and then you have characters like Mikey, Steph, and Drew. Who are never going to appear again. They didn't appear in life. It's strange. You have to give them a big spotlight here. Well, decent spotlight. Like, they get... What? They get one big scene in the first, ep in the first episode. And then... Steph gets a scene in the second episode. And then gets a scene in the third episode. And... It just, there wasn't really enough content to flesh them out all that much. That's the thing with episode uh, episode episodic episodes. You need a main driver, but you also need side content to fill the world. You can't just have the main story because then it can withhold it. But if you're trying to do a pretty basics, like a real life story, it can be dull at times. You need the other things to 
bring up. Um, they did a good, uh, a great job with Rachel. But I think at times, I don't really. S there's no. The Chloe never really went into the side like, yeah, she did go a bit overboard at times. Like that was never really explored in original Life is Strange. And I think she fall. She does a, again the ending. She does a bit too much in the third episode. My God, like after three days of knowing her. And ah, crap! I didn't read the journal. I'm gonna read that. Uh, I'll have to see. And that's kind of the, the problem with it being the prequel is that there's no real build up besides Chloe, David, and a bit of Frank. The life is strange. It, that's what this game should have been. It should have been a build up to that. And that's why I kind of think episodic episodes over months or years, or with months or years in between of the core relationship of Chloe and Rachel would might work better because then you could show like the growth of characters. Actually, that that sounds great. Yeah. A growth of characters, like you meet these characters in certain sections, maybe for a small bit, and you see what they're doing. You're always focusing on Chloe and Rachel and what they're up to. And then you just keep going, keep going. You, you meet Frank, you meet Joyce, you meet David, you meet all these characters on the side, and you see what they're going through. Maybe, if, uh, maybe you can just talk to them, maybe you can help them with it. But it give it more of a standing point. Whereas this just kind of leaves it like there's nothing added. There's no real point to have them in this. And then go like, oh hey, here's the face. Here's a recognizable face from the past. Here we are, go with these choices now. 48% told Rachel truth, 52% said they didn't. So majority didn't tell Rachel. <coughs> Jeez, you killed the plant with soda, you killed it with neglect. Well, one's a more honorable, one's a better thing, <laughs> at least, because you didn't neglect it. Okay. 91%. Oh my. Yeah, you accept David's photograph. To what end? Again, something with no payoff. What was the point of having it? Okay. You accepted David's photography, 91%. You rejected their photo photograph, not photography. 9%. You didn't have Drew's money at the start of the day. 66%. You gave Drew's money to Damon. 27 You turned Drew's money to him. 1%. You donated Drew's money. 3%. Donated. That was a firefighters. You kept Drew's money. 3%. Okay. You didn't visit the Norse at the hospital. 1%. You visited the Norse at oh, I Drew no. You visited the Norse at the hospital at eighty two percent. You spar with Drew over pudding seventeen percent. You played table type with Mikey. Is that a bug? Seventeen percent. I, I remember looking at I looked at them, I tried to talk to them, but nothing really happened. Huh. You didn't donate to the firefighters funds ninety six percent. 250 people had 250 dollars to donate. One had one grand to donate. Three percent had grand, and one and combined nobody had. You revealed Damon that Thunder was the snitch, that Sheldon was the snitch, that Gerald Gerald was the snitch, and only 17 percent of people revealed that he was the snitch. Okay. Rachel didn't meet her mother. 86%. Rachel met her mother. 14%. Jeez, I should look at that. What the heck? Because that doesn't seem like a choice. That seems like something that you said to her. Uh, 
Okay, I take back what I, I said a bit, but only a bit, because as I said, I was like, eh, maybe they should have a bit of a lead up, and I'm thinking, okay, maybe they can, you know, maybe they'll find a way to step out a bit more, they may call it one of the posters the next day, no, they haven't seen where she is. Okay, the photos, I remember those, that was a good lead up. And the thing that Nathan's taking the shots, well she's drunk up and she's overdosed and it's dead. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. Just a quick run though. What's that? What's the one that? Okay. What's that choice? Rachel meets her mother. Okay, how do you get... Rachel meeting mom. Okay. You know my name. Everybody's No, I didn't I didn't say that. What? No, I didn't. Oh, without bracelet. Oh, okay. Okay, yeah, I think it's just something I've given Rachel's mother her bracelet. That's strange. Okay, yeah. I think it's just you get the bracelet in episode 2 and most people go for the kiss. As you get the bracelet here and. Okay, if you gave Sarah a bracelet during the talking segment and Chloe, that Chloe had with Sarah in the burned down mill, then the, during the final ending sequence when Rachel and Chloe sit in the light, bench near the lighthouse, Sarah will bring a flower. And we'll be wearing Rachel's bracelet that you gave her during the conversation. First, Rachel, I and Rachel finally meet her mom for the very first time in 15 years. Okay, so that's what that choice was. Right. So I made a good choice there. Like taking the bracelet. I knew that bracelet was important because, because I don't care about kids, I don't care about anything. No, I just want to uh, like that bracelet was significant to the first one. Because Cole is asking for Frank about the bracelet. Rachel's bracelet, but that might just be the new one, I guess. Maybe it's the same one.
It's an okay series. The problem is it just doesn't have quite the same impact as the original Life is Strange. And that's really what it should have been aiming for. At least a lot of what it has left nowhere and it's very rush run. So you don't really care about the most of the cast or characters. <sighs> They've got Rachel good though. They show Chloe's reasoning for the, the choices she made a lot better. That there's characters like, and then there's just characters that are just left in the wind. Like Thunder actually, the guy in uh, the bouncer, I think he should have had a bigger role. He had a lot more development in the way he moved and talked and what he had. Like a lot more personality than most characters in the entire cat, in the entire cast. Okay. Okay. A lot of the characters didn't. Come back, we will find out. And Daniel Bonjour. Show him here. Really? Nope. Okay, nope. Apparently, it's not his same voice actor. For someone who's doing a pretty damn close job, if all was the closest, Chloe got better over the episodes. Okay, that's, so I'm gonna I just keep going on, but I'm pretty much out of uh, words and I'm out of breath. So 8.5. Great. 2.5 episodes and then the last half of the episodes just rushed to, climb, to finish everything. Great to decent voice acting, that depends on what characters there are. Maybe Victoria, maybe Victoria was the same. Maybe they made the college students who were the 
I don't know. Um, yeah. Do I recommend it? I guess you like certain elements of Life is Strange. I enjoyed the first one's ending. Then I enjoyed a lot of episode two because that was very, that was a lot more like the moments of Life is Strange. The three just kind of just, yeah, just didn't have anything of the same impact as the first two episodes. I felt kind of rushed in sections. Okay, don't leave it there. 8.5 out of 10. Life is strange before a storm. And I will be back in March when the last episode is released. Hopefully. I think that's all my thoughts. Raw content. Don't really go anywhere. Okay, prequel to Life is Strange. I think that's about it. So, thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed this series. I did, did a decent amount. Yeah, I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. And this is Gengai Z. Turn off his PC. See ya.